So before we get started on this video, I just want to mention real quick that uh, you know it's almost Christmas time, and and I know for myself, and uh, you know even for some of the guys that work for us, that this time of year, you know around the holidays and stuff, that uh, it gets kind of hard to to want to work while other people are on vacation and you know maybe opening presents on Christmas morning and having their dinner and all that good stuff. Uh, I used to have an old football coach that would be running around yelling, pointing at the high school in the middle of the Texas heat that would say, uh, if this was easy, everybody would be down here doing it. You boys need to suck it up. And, uh, you know, always kind of felt a little bit of pride about that. And, um, you know, same thing with farming. We're less than 2% of the population. And, uh, really, dairy farmers are less than 1%. So keep that in mind. Uh, show some pride about it, and you know you're not going to be the only one out working on a Christmas morning or Christmas Eve night or whatever. Uh, I know I will be, and uh, yeah. So keep motivated, keep going, and keep feeding the world. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Morning, everybody. Today is uh, Monday, December 23rd. I uh, just got done feeding the first load. Or fed group one and group two, group three sitting on the wagon, and uh, about to go check for heat. And uh, plan was I was gonna video mixing that feed this morning, but there was so much fog, you can still see some off in the distance. But uh, I couldn't even see the bucket this morning, so that plan didn't work. But we're gonna start filming right now, and uh, we're gonna about to check for heat in group one. So let's go. Okay, there was uh, two cows in, in heat in group one, and Wes is going to get those bred real quick. Um, I put a 23 for the date, you know, put a new orange uh, strip on their tail, and then I put a T. Uh, that's for the bull that the, that those or that, that one cow was going to get bred with. So I usually put the, the first letter of the bull name on there so Wes knows uh, which bull to use on which cow. So right now we're going to go check the, the close-ups. And after that, we gotta go get on the four wheeler and go do reels. This is my new time saver where I can't be in two places at once. Throw this thing up in the air, go see what I need to see, and then get back to work. And if I figure out how to edit videos on it, because my device won't let me for some reason, and we also get some really cool videos later on. And I see no babies there. All right, so now we gotta go reel up reels and get the gates ready, which basically means we're gonna go freeze our ass off for 20 minutes on the floor there. I put these reels in 24 a couple days ago, so all I gotta do is open the gate here, and then uh, this is where group one's going, and then after this we can go and uh, reel up 11 for group two, and 17 for group three. So that's where we're headed. Keep drive all the way back around.
there's still some crazy fog and there's still some frost on the ground and then uh everything else is covered in moisture and frost so get your gloves wet and then run around the foiler make your hands freeze and your face frozen and all that crap but it's literally like 65 degrees this afternoon so what are you supposed to do so all the so all the fields are ready gates are open for 24 for group one and 11 for uh, group two and then uh, the guy get working the feeling after he gets the dry cows he'll have to open 17 for group three so all that's ready we'll head back to the feed line check group two for heat put out feed for group three mix up feed for the close-ups mix up feed for the dry cows Mix up here for the heifers. Mix up here for the milk house again. All right, so we got the. Uh, all right, so we got close-up feed mixing. Uh, we just got done putting the water molasses in, and then we filled the wheel loader up with diesel here. And so, as we walk back, uh, I'm thinking right now about this, and um, I may end up putting this at the first part of the video, but we'll see how that goes. But anyway, these two uh, grain bins here. This is a 30-ton tank right here that we uh, used to put soybean meal in. And then we would put our whole corn in that one. And I'm pretty sure that one holds about five loads. And those two are MFS grain bins. And then the smaller one over there is like a six or eight, probably a six ton GSI tank. Uh, that one has a, a huge dent in the side of it where uh, I backed into it with a fee wagon one time or maybe twice. And uh, I'm pretty sure you could pop it out if you wanted to. But uh, we're needing to get rid of all this. Uh, we need to actually move the molasses tank probably over there somewhere. I, I really hate backing over here just to get water molasses. It's just an extra 10 times I have to get out of the tractor and the wheel loader. But um, yeah, that's the, you know, the molasses tank ain't nothing. But uh, so these grain bins, we're looking to sell them. I'm not really sure how much we want for them. If you're interested in them, you can email me at Texas, texasgrazer at yahoo.com. Um, like I said, that one holds about five loads, and this one's like a 30 ton, and that one's about a six ton. Uh, there's nothing absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with them. We just kind of outgrew them. We used to feed in the barn when we had a double eight herringbone, so we would mix our corn and soybean meal into that tank, and then auger it into the barn. And then I would think uh, about 2007, uh, just the, the feed system inside the barn was shot. And so we quit feeding in the barn, and then um, uh, then later on, a couple years later, we remodeled to a double 15 herringbone, and we never never put the feed system back in. And uh, we still use this up until about six years ago, grinding corn, you know, cracked corn, and 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 uh, you can see the auger that goes right into the feed wagon. Uh, and we just quit using it because it was too slow. Some of the flighting and some of the augers are still good. Uh, yeah, we just have to figure it out, but we need to get all this gone here pretty quick. Um, so if anybody's interested, like I said, uh, email me at texasgrazer at yahoo.com and then we can talk about it and figure out a plan, um, you know, for money and, and how to get them out of here. Well, we got heifer feed mixed up. We're about to head put it out. But Jeremy's about to take this older truck and the older trailer, flatbed trailer, over to the 533 where the mechanics are that work on our trucks. Because if you remember a couple months ago, the, was this a couple months ago? It was sometime in October. 
that uh, trailer cammed over uh, while we were getting the last little bit of hay. So might as well go get it fixed now. But one of the brakes is not releasing, so. Grabbed a pair of channel locks. Grabbed a pair of channel locks and we're gonna see if we can adjust the slack adjuster uh, to get this brake released. We took this trailer over there. Oh man, it had to be like middle of summer. <laughs> kind of in a break between hay. Uh, and told them that the brakes weren't all that great on this truck. And they put one, one set of new pads on this wheel here. And that was it. They said the rest of them were good, but I think they were just busy and they were trying to get us out of the way. Well, it definitely reason release so we're gonna see if that's good Ow, shit. Pulled it up here on the driveway, everything's spinning free. So, yeah, can you take it over there now? All right, well, I got sidetracked because the W900 pulled in with the Cummins in it and uh, brought a load of steam flake. But we're done feeding. Uh, I just got to park the wagon up here. I did drop my phone again. Phone's okay. Uh, the protective cover, not so much. But uh, we're about to go get some lunch, and then we got some stuff to do this afternoon, obviously. But uh, we're going to park it up here because it's got mud all over it from feeding the heifers. And then uh, that way this afternoon when I start up to feed group three, I can drive down the driveway, and all the mud will fall off and not go inside the feed lane. Uh, but we're going to go get some lunch, and then we'll be back at it. Well, all right. Came back from lunch, and the nutritionist was here. And so now a couple hours later, here we are. Oh, we're going to go try to get something done. We did have two babies that were born, and uh, we got them in and got the cows in. And um, yeah, just got done doing that. Now we're gonna get this dozer going.
I forgot all about this uh, shear bolt being broke. I broke it this morning and uh, didn't have any spares. Just had that broken piece from the last time and used it the rest of the morning. And uh, it's just something that happens every now and then with uh, you know all the startups on the wagon. Uh, it's just a shear bolt and the PTO shaft just to uh, protect the gearbox from ever getting damaged if, if something was to, to lock up the, the screws inside the wagon. Uh, it can happen quite a bit if you if you mix big fill, big full loads and then leave it parked for a while. You don't ever want to do that because that's really hard on, on it to start back up. Um, and you'll break shear bolts pretty easy there. But I haven't done that. <clears throat> I think it just broke over um, just been it. I don't even remember the last time I had one break, so um, it is dark now, and I got a couple other things I got to do. These are just going to be left here for spares, so I'm just getting them tight enough that the nuts don't fall off. Get a little nylon on them, and then they'll, they'll stay there. And if I ever need them, they're here. These old half inch wrenches just stay in the wagon for whenever you do need it. I used to break them more often when, uh, before the Puma, before we bought the Puma, because we had a smaller tractor on the feed wagon. And so you would have to uh, turn the PTO on with it revved up some so the tractor wouldn't die. It was a little under horsepower. And then, so starting the wagon with the with the load on it, with the PTO, or with the engine revved up, would would break these more often. But it's no big deal. We'll get this fixed. Well, all right, I just started 6410 out. We gotta slice bells, and uh, we're gonna slice some bells, and then we got about an hour after that of some, a few things to do. I gotta put out fever group three. So today we only had like four or five cows to breed. Which the last couple days there's been a few less than normal or than what we were breeding. Uh, we are like 23 days into breeding. We haven't had any repeats yet. So, you know, a cow cycles every 21 days. So, uh, we don't have any repeats. That's awesome. But, um, you know, it's a little early to be going off that. But I think so far it's going pretty good. Uh, there was also like four or five cows in heat that were early. And obviously we didn't breed them. We wait 60 days uh, volunteer waiting period before we breed them. And then um, we had those two cows calves this afternoon. They both had heifers. Uh, all that went good. Uh, the dozer work that we were doing, we were just uh, trying to make it around the lagoon a little more accessible for the manure spreaders. And <clears throat> there's also a hose in there that runs to the third lagoon that we're trying to uh, they got plugged up and we're going to try to unplug it back. We haven't used it in a couple years. We've just been parking over on one side and sucking water out of there that way. And uh, we'd like to get it back to how it used to be. And then the nutritionist came today, which, uh, you know, I talked to him. Well, I guess I didn't have to talk to him, but I talked to him for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we started the, the baleage out behind Wes's house today. That's actually what the bells that we're about to slice. So we haven't fed any of it yet. Um, we finished, basically we finished all the first cutting off and now this is the second cutting that we're getting into. Uh, the first cutting, there's probably a hundred bells of some real crappy stuff. If you remember, if you've been following the channel for a while, the, we got three good days back first part of April in the hay field and then it rained a whole bunch and then we, we had to sit for 30 days before we got to go back out. So a lot of that ryegrass died, and then uh, there's about 100 bells that we've been feeding to dry cows and heifers. Um, there's 100 bells of that left, and we're just going to end up keep feeding it to the heifers and, and put it on, on some hay trailers for free choice, and then we're going to move out to the uh, second cutting and start feeding that up. So there's, if I remember right, there's uh, 1,500, 1,600 bells out there. So that'll last us for probably into the summer. So the nutritionist took some samples of that 
and uh, hopefully with it being almost Christmas that uh, he'll have the results maybe end of the week, first part of next week, uh, which usually only takes a couple days, but with it being uh, Christmas Eve tomorrow and then Christmas, uh, it's going to be a little later than normal. And he took some core samples of the corn silage just to see how well we packed it. And uh, I don't know how long it'll take to find that out. And, you know, we had that load of steam flake come in, steam flake corn. Uh, this will be our second load of feed steam flake. We used to feed it years ago, and we're just feeding it again now. Um, and then, um, I can't really remember what else happened. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.